Today on Applied Science, I'm going to show you how to transfer holographic images onto chocolate in a DIY process. Check this out. There's, now keep in mind, there's no printing or ink or plastic or anything on top of the chocolate. It's just pure 100% chocolate that's been shaped into a pattern that reflects light in this way. And so not only can we do 2D images like this, but also 3D images work just fine and even full color 3D images. And so really we can do quite a lot of things. So in this video, I'm gonna start off showing you the DIY method to copy these uh, holograms onto chocolate. And then we're gonna kick it up a notch and I'm going to show you how to make a metal master, a stamping die from commercially made holograms, remastering them if you will. And then we'll throw it into the electron microscope and actually look at the surface fringes that are creating these patterns for us. You should definitely check out Tech Ingredients' video on making diffractive optics on chocolate, where he took a diffraction grating and poured chocolate over this and molded the pattern into it. And so the reason this works is because the surface of this diffraction grating has texture to it, a whole bunch of straight lines, and when light hits it, you get this rainbow effect. So that works great. The challenge is that if you take a hologram like this, uh, there is no surface texture there. Like if you poured chocolate over the top of this, nothing would happen. And if you ripped it off the book and poured chocolate on the back, nothing would happen either. The, the texture that's actually making this image happen is trapped in between the layers of the front and the back. And so this DIY method is all about separating those layers in a way where you can still uh, use it, you know, without destroying them, basically. So if you want to follow this DIY process, the first step is to pick a type of hologram that's going to work which are these foil embossed holograms. So this is a good one. You know what works really the best are these cheap stickers. Um, one, because the pattern is very deeply embossed and so it's much, much easier to mold this. And then also these are very inexpensive. So you can try over and over again and ruin a few of them and it still works. So I got these off eBay. And by the way, uh, a great way to feel old is to realize that the key word you have to use on eBay is actually vintage to find something that you thought was, you know, kind of new and cool, right? So you have to search for vintage, vintage foil holograms like this on eBay. And this would work too, this is fine. It's a little more challenging to do these 3D holograms than it is the flat 2D holograms. What definitely will not work is this type of hologram. This is actually a photopolymer hologram and you can tell because it's dark when you're holding it off axis. The foil ones are obviously very foily and shiny. These dark ones will not work because this hologram does not exist at any surface through here. It's actually a sort of, it uses the whole depth of the material to reflect light. The uh, things that are reflecting light are more or less parallel to the surface, whereas the things that are doing the diffraction here are perpendicular to the surface. So with this one, if we clear it out, we can access this diffraction grating and stamp it. Whereas with this one, there's nothing to extract because there is no plane in here that contains the image data, but they do look really nice. After you've picked out a hologram you want to use, let's say this one, the next step is to attach it to a sturdy base. So one thing you can notice is that, you know, these things are pretty flimsy. And even as far as holograms go, this one is actually relatively thick. The type of holograms that are pressed onto paper like this are impossibly thin. If you put this into the chemical bath that I'm going to show you next, it almost disappears entirely. Um, it's basically just cardboard, and they wanted this to be really flush in here, so the, the front surface is super, super thin and delicate. So the way to uh, make this easier to handle is to glue these holograms face down onto a piece of plastic. And I find that something about, you know, a millimeter and a half or a sixteenth of an inch is, is about right. I used eighth inch thick acrylic or a polycarbonate, and that was way too thick. It's too hard to demold the chocolate if you're going to do a direct molding process. So you get yourself some polycarbonate, probably lots of other plastics would work too, and um, use a good chemical resistant glue to basically glue the surface of this down to the plastic. Two-part epoxy is ideal. If you are using a sticker like this, there's the optional next step after this thing has cured. Uh, you can peel the backing off and you'll be exposed with the adhesive on the backside here. Um, optionally, you can dunk this whole thing in isopropyl alcohol, and what that will do is loosen the adhesive here. In fact, it will completely get rid of it. You want, you want the adhesive to be gone. You don't have to do this. The next step will also take care of it, but this makes things a little quicker. If you're uh, doing something with uh, like a paper-backed uh, hologram like this, or if the backing is just plain plastic and doesn't have an adhesive, you probably don't have to do anything with the alcohol. Next, you want to dunk the mounted hologram into a concentrated solution of sodium hydroxide, basically drain opener. 
And the reason that we use this is uh, twofold. One, if you are using a uh, paperback hologram like this, the sodium hydroxide is good at dissolving the paper, and it's also really good at dissolving the aluminum. So this hologram is made by um, having a plastic pattern that has the, the pattern stamped into it, and then they coat the back with aluminum foil, very, very thin foil, and then press the whole thing together to make either a sticker or a, or a paper-backed hologram like this. And so what we want to do is basically dissolve away everything except for the front layer that has uh, the, the pattern embossed into it. There's a lot of variation in how holograms are commercially produced, but this gets the basic idea across. Imagine this is like a cross section of this sticker here. So the front of the sticker is just smooth plastic on the front. Then there's this magic diffraction pattern in here. Then there's the foil layer, aluminum, and then there's this adhesive layer on the back. And so what we want to do is just blow away completely the foil and the adhesive layer so that we're just left with the plastic with this special pattern on it. And so the reason we add some structure, you know, glue this thing face down to plastic is just to make it easier to handle. And um, even if you don't remove the adhesive layer, what ends up happening is the sodium hydroxide kind of wicks in the side here and starts dissolving the aluminum. And so you can actually watch it dissolve away. And even if you don't you know, play with the adhesive, it's, it'll, it'll still find its way in here. And if you leave it in there for a day or so, it's probably going to get the whole thing dissolved. Also, this surface is delicate, but it's not quite as delicate as you might think. Like you can take a soft artist's brush and kind of help the process along. If there's a spot that's not dissolving very well, you can get in there and just brush it gently. And that's totally fine. I've abused the molds that I'm going to show you that I've been using to make these chocolates quite a bit. And uh, they're still holding together despite all the abuse. After the aluminum and adhesive and everything else has dissolved, uh, give it a rinse and you'll notice that the image is probably gone. But that's only because the water is filling up the gaps in that diffraction grating and keeping it from diffracting light. So blow it dry with compressed air or a compressed gas duster and you'll see the image magically appear. Now it's not as bright as it was because we don't have that aluminum layer reflecting light for us, but the pattern is now exposed. So we can just pour chocolate right in there. We're ready to mold already. Uh, one trick though, the a hologram has to be fairly small if you want to mold it directly, smaller than about 20 millimeters on a side. And um, the chocolate does have to be tempered. Uh, again, check out Tech Ingredients video because he has the most practical way of doing chocolate tempering. Don't worry about all these complicated you know, things you'll find on the web. Basically just melt the chocolate at 50 degrees C and then take it off the heat and add more chocolate to help it cool down until you get down to about 28 degrees C and then warm it back up to 32 and you're done. But the trick is that these temperatures are fairly critical. Like you really only have a couple degrees here to, to wiggle around. And if you go over, uh, the chocolate's ruined and you have to start over again. Um, the trick with this is that you want all the um, crystals in the chocolate to be of a certain phase and they all have different melting points. And so you wanna get it right at the right melting point so that all of the undesirable crystals are melted and all the desirable ones are in there. Um, I was thinking of doing another video on chocolate tempering, trying to actually show the crystal structure because I don't think I've ever actually seen it at like a microscopic level. But anyway, that's a topic for another time. So we're ready to mold. And uh, if you've got your small mold, 20 millimeters or less, don't do anything to it. You don't have to coat it with anything or, or anything like that. Um, I found room temperature works best. So if the chocolate is at 32 degrees or 30 degrees C, your mold is at room temperature, just pour it on there and that's it. Let it cool down. Don't put it in the fridge because that'll, um, when you take it out of the fridge, condensation will form on it and ruin it. It's just at room temperature. And after it cools down to room temperature, pop it out of the mold and you've got a, a working hologram. Now the difficulty arises when you want to do a hologram that's larger than about 20 millimeters on an edge. I spent quite a bit of time trying to make this work and made lots and lots of failed hologram attempts. One thing I noticed is that it always seemed to work around the edges. The edges looked great, but the middle was just completely gone. No image whatsoever. And I was pretty certain that the chocolate was filling the mold properly. I wasn't worried that the chocolate wasn't working its way into the diffraction pattern. Uh, my theory is that the chocolate contracts as it cools and it actually rips itself apart because the plastic, it doesn't uh, expand and contract in the same way that the chocolate does. And so I you know, thought about this for a while and thought about mold releases. I tried spraying a silicone into the mold and then blowing it out as well as I could, but even a tiny thin layer of mold release ruins the diffractive patterns. We're talking about you know, maybe hundreds of nanometers or even tens of nanometers of detail that need to be recovered. So even a super thin layer of mold release isn't gonna work. 
So the solution that I came up with that ended up working really well is to make a silicone mold of the, um, of the taken apart hologram and then pour the chocolate into the silicone mold. So this is great because the silicone is pretty compliant. So as the chocolate cools, it contracts a teeny bit and the silicone just goes along with it, whereas the plastic would not and then the hologram would rip itself apart because there was no compliance. Uh, another benefit is that, you know, this is quite a bit easier to demold because it's, you know, tough and flexible and everything and easier to wash. I, I don't know about the durability, but um, handling this is a whole lot easier than handling the raw taken apart hologram, that's for sure. I used this stuff called Sorta Clear 40, and the 40 refers to 40A durometer, which is sort of a medium soft durometer for silicone rubbers like this. And uh, the only downside of using this stuff is that it's very slow curing. You will have to wait overnight for this to work, but uh, that's also a benefit because it has a very long pot life. So if you mix up a bunch, I think you can spend like maybe 30 minutes, maybe even an hour using it before it starts to set up. I also tried this kneadable paste, and the benefit of this is that you don't have to, you can't make a mess, like you can't spill it, it doesn't get everywhere, you can just knead it by hand, and you don't even have to really make a form for it, you can just sort of plop it on there like a silly putty. And this kind of worked. The putty did not fill the diffraction grating nearly as well as the liquid. It kind of almost worked. I could get results, sort of, but not nearly as good as the sort of clear 40. So I probably want to go with a liquid silicone. Also, it probably helps a lot to degas the silicone. Um, you don't have to be super careful about it. This silicone can dissolve fairly large amounts of gas, and so if you get most of it out, when you pour it into the mold, a lot of that gas will dissolve back into the silicone. And so even with just rough cursory degassing, uh, when you pour it into the mold, it'll look like there's bubbles in there, but they'll dissolve, and you'll end up with something that's almost perfectly clear. Not that the clarity really matters, but if there is a worry about trapped air, um, you know, at the diffraction grating surface, the silicone will actually absorb some of that trapped gas and fill in every nook and cranny in the diffraction grating. In these videos, you always get to see the end result all polished up, but uh, in actuality, there's many dozens of hours of, you know, side explorations and different paths to go down. And this is actually one of the side quests that turned out to be really worth it. Uh, I was concerned that the mold wouldn't be durable enough, that we would crack the hologram open and try to mold chocolate in there and it would ruin the, the mold in the process. So I wanted to get a metal mold made from the hologram that would be super durable. And there's, you know, a lot of different processes to coat things in metal. One of the most well-known is this silver mirror technique. Um, you mix up a whole bunch of chemicals, um, silver nitrate, I'll put a link in the description to check this out, uh, household sugar and household ammonia of all things and drain opener, pretty basic chemicals. You mix them all together in this pretty spectacular demo and then everything it touches turns to silver. It's kind of a budget-minded Midas touch. And um, if you put the plastic hologram in there along with all these solutions, it gets coated with silver. Now keep in mind that the layer is super, super thin. We're talking like, you know, angstroms. I mean, it's, it, it's thin enough where you can, you know, easily scratch through it with a fingernail even. It's starting to come through. So we can't really use the silver by itself. We need to thicken it up to give it even more heft so we can actually make a mold out of this. Now that the thing is coated in silver, we can build up the bulk with an electrochemical process because now the whole thing's conductive. So I happened to have this nickel plating kit in my garage and I hooked it up and deposited nickel on there for about an hour which builds up a relatively thick layer. I mean, it's still thin, maybe about 20 or 30 micron, maybe a little bit more, about a thou of an inch. Uh, but it's thick enough that we can actually peel it off of the mold, off of the hologram, and now we end up with a true metal master. Um, it's still very thin though, so then what we do is add that onto another piece of metal. So now we've got very, very thin silver, thin nickel, and then thicker brass. And the way I decided to attach it was just with soft solder, lead-based solder, and this, uh, worked better than I thought, but it also kind of wrinkled the, the foil a bit, and it's kind of distorted. Um, but much to my amazement, putting it all together on this aluminum pipe, heating it up, and then pressing plastic with basically just hand pressure on there actually produced a pretty good result. So now we have a, basically a hot stamping die, and you can stamp holograms onto any kind of plastic you want, or at least plastic that can melt lower than the metal die will. Pretty cool. Even after quite a bit of misuse and use, uh, the stamping die still looks pretty good. And so I took a sample of it and put it into the electron microscope to get a, an idea of what these surface fringes look like. 
and here they are. And uh, you know, that's cool and everything, but I really wanted to do is get a profile view. So basically edge on and manage to you know, finagle things around and get an edge on view. So the whole sheet thickness is probably on the order of 20 to 30 micron. And if we use that as kind of a yardstick, we can figure out the peak to peak spacing of this diffraction grating is surprisingly big. It's maybe about 10 or 15 micron. Um, I suspect for very simple patterns like this uh, sticker, the diffraction grating, grating can be pretty far apart, even as far as maybe 10 micron, I guess, even though that does seem high. But some of the gratings for the holograms are probably much tighter, more like one micron. And if you look closely, you can actually see another surface texture that's superimposed on the large ridges. And I suspect that the diffraction grating might actually be those tiny ridges, and the large ones are just, I don't know, different surface modulation or something. Or I'm not really sure exactly how the patterns for these are created. They may not be um, created optically like a hologram would be created from raw materials. But anyway, I don't know. By the way, if you're thinking, wow, holograms on chocolate, that would be a fantastic business idea. You wouldn't be the first. In fact, there is a startup called Morphotronics or Morphotonics, and uh, they even raised money according to Crunchbase as recently as last year and had some cool press releases in 2014 with some really nice images. Um, but it looks like they may have pivoted to stamping the holograms onto plastic as opposed to doing chocolates, kind of like we did in this video. Um, but anyway, <laughs> it is a fun process, and you can totally get started with uh, very few tools on your own, and I uh, hope you do. Okay, well, I hope you found that interesting, and I will see you next time. Bye.